Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Ben Zinn for Epic Guitar Instruction. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we have a guitar lesson on the John Legend tune, All of Me, which is a great piano and vocal tune that we're going to arrange for guitar and share with you all the different chord progressions that we see in the tune. So let's jump in and get started and take a look at the first one. Now, as you can see, I'm capoed here at the sixth fret. So I'm going to refer to all my chords in the open position as if E minor were here, G were here, and so on. The intro of the tune is a nice instrumental piano piece that we're going to adapt for our guitar, of course. And it's also going to provide a nice framework for not only our intro, but also our verses. So let's go through the chords for this, and then we'll talk about how to play it for our guitar. The very first chord that we're going to deal with is a B minor. Then we're going to go to a G. To a D. And finally to an A. Now in the beginning of the song, what we're going to do is I'm going to make a modification to a couple of these chords to play this figure here. So what we're doing here is instead of playing my full B minor here, which I will return to in the verses, I'm actually just playing the second string open and the second fret at the first string. Now you can play this with a pick or finger style if you want. And I'm playing it three times in that rhythm. That's an important rhythm that's going to provide a good foundation for the rest of the tune. So important to get that rhythm into your ears and under your hands. And then we're going to transition to my G chord. But this time what I'm going to do is if I'm playing finger style, I'm only going to pluck strings 6, 2, and 1. Again, using the same rhythm. Or if you want to strum, just strum that rhythm all the way through. Then we're going to a D, which again, I can pluck the root note in the top two strings, or I can strum. And finally to my A chord, same thing. I'm going to pluck the root note, which is the fifth string, and then the top two strings. Or if you're more comfortable strumming, just strum through the entire chord. So all together now. Moving into our verses, when the vocals start to appear, we're going to play the same chord progression, but we're just going to play a little bit more in the lower register of our guitar this time. We'll start with our B minor chord here, and I'm going to use that same overlying rhythmic pulse throughout this. Just playing a little bit lower. So B minor to G to D to A. You can play this strummed or you can play finger style. Again, we have flexibility because we're just adapting from piano. That's how we can approach our verses. Now we're moving ahead to our next section. So this is the second chord progression that we'll see in the tune. First of all, let's take you through those chords. The first one we're going to see here is an E minor 9. Then we're going to a D and to an A. So starting with our E minor 9, if we play finger style, we have a really nice 
way to get close to what the piano is doing here. And that is simply to strike strings six and four together and then arpeggiate the other three strings like so. And then there's this nice melody figure that we see up top that we can also incorporate. Now at this point, you might want to let go of these notes here. To get that descending part. And that descending part is just the third fret, second fret to open. In that, once again, based on that foundational rhythm. So we have the option to finger pick that in some pattern that gets close to what the piano is doing, but you're certainly welcome to strum if you're more comfortable doing that as well. So to strum, I'm just going to start and strum down to my fourth string and just pick the rest of the notes. And then go through the rest of my chords to D, A, D to A. That progression, the E minor to D to A, happens two times, and now we arrive at our chorus. This is our third chord progression that we see in the tune. So now we've arrived at our chorus, which once again finds us with a new set of chords and chord changes. Let's take you through these first. The very first one is going to be a D5, which I'll play like so. And then we'll go to our B minor, but we'll also be aware that we can, as an embellishment, release the middle finger and make a B sus2 and return to the B minor. From here, we're going to go to kind of a funky chord, but this is a nice piano inspired voicing. This is a E minor with a G in the bass. And note here that I'm not playing the fifth string. I'm in fact deadening the fifth string with my middle finger here. Next to an A sus4, which is just like our A chord, except for we're raising up the second string note a half step. That resolves into our A chord there. So those are the chords of our chorus, and we're going to play them like so. So starting with our D5 up here, we want to arpeggiate the high note and we really want to hear this sort of thing happening. This rolling high to low motion. That's really nice sound that we can copy from the piano. Into our B minor. At this point I can start strumming a little bit more and picking inside the chord. E minor over G. Now if you want to throw this in, you can. That little melodic idea that we see from earlier. Once again, chorus. Now, you might notice that there is some bar chords in this tune mixed in with the open chords, and this can be a bit of a challenge. Even though we're capoed up, we still have to use some bar chords in this tune. Uh, and so we want to help you out with these skills. If you're just starting out in these bar chords, hey, look, they can be tricky for everyone. I remember struggling with these things as well. And there are certain tips and tricks that we want to pass on to you. Uh, if you click on the link below, we're going to send you a free video lesson 
and an ebook that outlines some good bar chord exercises and some proper fret hand techniques. We want to give you this information so you can not only use for this tune, but for any tune that you want to learn that uses bar chords. So please click on that link. We'll send you a free video lesson, free ebook. That's from Epic Guitar Instruction. Check it out and we'll continue on. Now our last figure in the song is a little post-chorus thing, little instrumental, and once again, a new set of changes. So we'll take you through this. And after you get the next progression, you have all the pieces in the tune. The trick is just putting them together in the right way. So the post-chorus interlude or instrumental is gonna find us starting on a B minor, going to a G, to a D, and to an A. Now this is actually the same as our intro and verse, so technically it's not really a new progression, but you want to approach it in a little bit of a different way. Because it's an instrumental feature, you definitely want to play a little more melodically and a little bit different than if you're singing over the verses. So the way, some ways that you can do that are to simply pick within the chord. Maybe move some notes around. We're going to do this two times. Even though we're going back into the verse and we have the same chords, the feel is going to change when we return back to that verse. We want to go more back into this. That sort of feel. So at this point, we're now just repeating sections in the tune. And we have all the pieces that we need to put together the whole song. That is All of Me by John Legend. We have all of those components now. Put them together. Have fun with this tune. Such a great tune and a fun one to adapt for guitar. So I appreciate you all tuning in for the lesson. And hey, if you dug the lesson, click the like button. Let us know you like it. Give us a comment in the comment section below. Subscribe. More lessons. Hit that subscribe button. And oh, by the way, we have that free lesson. Click on the link in the YouTube description box. We'll send you all that good stuff from Epic Guitar Instruction. Uh, I want to say thanks again so much. I'm Ben Zinn for Epic Guitar Instruction, and I'll see you next time. No rough housing. Okay. No shenanigans. <clears throat> no shenanigans allowed. No tomfoolery. <laughs> no carpet bagging. Wait, what? Okay, so we're at our chorus. No valley who? It wasn't Ballyhooed. No? All right. Yeah. Totally wrong. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, it was totally accurate, but I just hadn't heard it since, like, I read a history book. So it was what was it? I can't, that's what I was trying to remember. Uh, it probably ended up on the cutting room floor. Probably did. Never yeah. to be seen from again.